Hi everyone, Sandy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to be building the 135th scale M60A2 patent tank from Academy. Uh, this kit's fairly new and looks kind of exciting, a little different, really unusual looking turret on this. And we'll also be using our Vallejo Murdoch colors again like we had done on the early uh, Abrams tank. So kind of excited to get going, so let's get started on it. Okay, uh, as we start to assemble the, uh, the lower part of the hull for the M60, uh, you might think this looks familiar if you've watched a few of my other videos, and because this whole lower chassis is the exact same as the Magok 7 that we built a couple months ago, other than the plastic color. It's the only main difference on those parts. And keep in mind too, this is the, uh, the olive drab plastic that shows up quite a bit of the scratches. The plastic's smooth right there, but you have to kind of polish it out, or once paint gets on it, it completely clears that up. Now I've gone ahead and glued these top parts of the uh, lower hull on. It kind of gives it like a curved shape to it, where they molded it that way. And I did that because that would required a lot of uh, multi-part holding it in different areas and making sure that it's set up properly. And although most of it is not seen once you get all the wheels and stuff on, I wanted to have a, the best possible uh, connection for it so it holds up really well. The parts themselves are pretty straightforward and you can see I've got all the pieces all cut out and ready to go here for uh, for both sides of the vehicle. So it's just a matter of just taking your time and making sure you get the right parts in the right spot. There are a couple of different types of uh, what do you call, suspension arm that comes out but uh, they're they're pretty much uh, different. When we get to that point right there, I'll show you the differences in how they look. So, so you won't, shouldn't have any problem. And so I'm going to go ahead and start putting the rest of these parts on. I've laid out the uh, suspension down here so it's all ready to go because of the different uh, parts. Uh, Academy has made it pretty pretty simple and straightforward because of the little notch that they have cut inside here that uh, once you get the piece in you just need to spin it just till it gets to that right point and you'll get the right angle for the uh, suspension arm that goes in on that. So you, once you put that one in then you've got, and we'll glue all these in after, uh, after I show you on all of this. Also too, Academy has given you a little bolt detail that I went and pre-glued pre in on top there earlier on. So you just go down the line, set all these in, and then the very last one is just slightly different, so you want to keep that one aside. But this way you'll get, uh, oh, that one little piece is out of whack, you'll get them all lined up. I'm going to start all the assembly on the wheels right now as well too. Uh, and as usual, uh, Academy gives you the poly caps that go inside, which will make assembly, you know, for and painting much much easier later on. Because this way you can just assemble the wheels, paint them, and then when you're done, you can snap them right back on, and you don't have to glue them into place. 
So these are very simple and straightforward. Just a little bit of glue after you put the poly cap in and the little seam around there. You got an A and B side. Let it set up for a few seconds and you're done with that. And then the return rollers up on top are another uh, real simple to, to do. Just uh, oh, two of the same ones right there. So you just A and B and you got six of those to glue together. And once you get that done, uh, you're ready to attach them to the vehicle. I've got most of the, uh, the road wheels on here and I actually have didn't glue the rest of the the arms in just in case we had to do any tweaking on it uh, so you make sure all the wheels fit really well but as you can see the suspension lined up perfectly and they're really tight fit for the suspension arm so although there's no glue inside of it it actually held up really really well and all the wheels are touching the ground properly so we can go ahead and glue the rest of the return rollers and one other quick thing you have to put some spacers on and don't forget to put those on when you're building the uh, the drive sprocket it too has a poly cap in it too so you'll be able to uh, turn that which especially these are the individual tracks on this kit so that's going to come in very handy later on having that piece comes with a link and length type track and what that means is that on the bottom and the top and in the very front and back there are long pieces of pre-molded track that are fairly easy to put together there are some individual links that you're going to want to uh, wrap around the uh, drive sprocket and the return roller uh, to get them moving on here uh, my advice is to actually glue them to the bottom like I did here uh, and then start building them up and wrapping them all the way around the top. It makes it a little bit easier on this type of track. Uh, you see I fall off every once in a while and that was just from not putting enough glue on but they actually do go together pretty easily and shouldn't give you much of a problem at all. Because of the type of uh, color of plastic that we have on here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a coat of black, oh, the NATO black over the entire thing now to check what kind of flaws I had. Because all through this area and in this area and a few other areas, there were some witness marks that needed to be sanded out. That uh, We just want to make sure that we got a nice clean surface so when we go to put our camouflage on. We'll also, because putting the NATO black on, we'll 
recolor the tracks and do the shadow effect for the lower hull right now as well. Just wanted to quickly to show you, you can see how smooth the actual plastic really was. It looked really beat up and a mess, but once you put the paint on, it completely hides the, uh, the effect. What I'm going to show you right here is uh, everything has been going together really, really simple and easy uh, until I get to this portion right here, and this is the uh, the rear storage racks. These are quite a bit of work to put together. Uh, it's not impossible, but I've been spending the last couple of hours just working on this one, and I put some black paint on just to see if I need to do any more sanding. Uh, to start off to show you, what you get are three three of these bars. Now I purposefully did not sand these yet just to show you all the little connection points that are on here. Uh, so you've got about nine to ten connection points depending on which bar it was that you need to sand completely off. Plus you have all of these little bars or plates that you put together and then you've got to weave through all of these pieces. So like I said it is proving to be a quite a bit of difficulty to get them to look right and uh, like I said, you can do it, and it just takes a lot of work on it, but uh, just be aware going into that point that you're probably going to need a, a good uh, five, six hours working on both sides to get them to look right between sanding and doing all that other parts. So I'm going to start working on the other one. I'm probably not going to film the rest of putting that together. Just for the one reason, I'm so close to it, my hands would always be in front of the camera, so you wouldn't really probably get to see very much anyway. But the instructions are very clear, and... They're not hard to follow, it's just actually uh, making it line up properly is the tough part. And, and I don't want it to sound like I think that Academy did um, wrong by it. They, the toughest part was just the way the regular army actually designed these baskets. You know, when you're doing it one-to-one -one scale, it's a lot easier, but uh, Academy did a good job molding everything. It's just a matter of actually getting it all to fit together. And in... You can always do that trick like I did on one of the other vehicles too, that if you don't like the way it's turning out, build it the best you can and then throw some tarps over it. I went and completed the other half of the storage racks on the side of the turret and wasn't very happy at all the way I had done, they had come out. So like I had told you earlier, we're gonna go ahead and tarp off all the, uh, the racks. We'll put some other cargo and stuff up on top of it for now, but we'll just paint it the way it is. Uh, excuse me, paint the camouflage, and then we'll go paint the tarp separately um, after we're all done with that. And right off, I'm sure there'll be someone who'll say that they didn't tarp these in real life and such, and I, probably not, but like I said, it, I didn't like the way the racks came out, so tarps are going to look better than a, than a beat-up rack. Okay, we're ready to start painting now, and we're going to use our Vallejo Air Murdoch Camo Colors again. Uh, but since we just did this version for the Abrams, I thought we'd do a little something different and do the snow temperate with trees and shrubs, which is a mixture of insignia white, forest green, sand, and black. So what I think I'm going to do is, since basically the white is going to be replacing the field drab, we'll go ahead and start with the white first. That way it'll be much easier to cover over if we get a little bit too large with the white portion of it. Now I've thrown some pieces of paper just inside the uh, the the bottom of the fenders just to keep any extra overspray from getting on the wheels. Okay, I went and put on the uh, the white coat on it and had a little problem with it spitting a little bit but I don't think it's going to matter too much because we're going to go over most of the edges with the forest green which is our next color. I went and pulled the white back out and did a little bit more white on the vehicle. Thought there wasn't enough on there. Also went and put a little on the wheels. Now we did get a little overspray on the side of the rubber, but we'll take care of all of that in a few minutes. Uh, the next step we're going to put on is the, the tan variant that goes all over the vehicle too, but in very small amount. I 
I finished up the uh, the rest of the camouflage job by putting the black and the rest of the white on, and then I painted the tarps going the tarps in the back and the canvas cover up front. Just a slightly variation on the green, so it looked like it belonged with the camouflage job, but was you know faded like fabric hat usually does. So what we're going to do now is, now that we've worked on all of the camouflage, we're going to work on really dirtying up this vehicle. Now I do have a little touch up along the tracks and the road wheels, things like that, because I looked a few pictures that I did see, looks like they just kind of sprayed this inside and didn't really care. And once we put all the uh, the washes and the streaking grime and all that other kind of stuff, it's really going to hide all that. But what I'll do now is I'll finish up uh, touching up all the black and then we'll start working on weathering. Now we're going to do a little chipping on the model. Uh, we're going to, I like using the Panzer Ace's dark rust color. It doesn't really look like a rust to me. It's really just kind of a dark brown black. This is kind of similar to the one I was mixing up a while ago, but if it's already in a bottle form already, we're going to go ahead and use that. And we're just going to start putting some chips. And just in different areas where you would imagine some wear and tear going on a vehicle. Real, real light. Especially around hinges, things that get a lot of motion and things around uh, these hatches. Now this particular vehicle, I'm probably going to put a little bit more wear and tear on it than a normal vehicle goal. And some people say, well, it might not be realistic because they wouldn't let a vehicle get that beat up. But this is just the fun of modeling. When it's your model, you can make it any way you want. You can come up with a story in your head about how beat up the thing was, what it's gone through, and just go from there. So like I said, I'm going to go over, start doing a little more chipping over the entire vehicle. Not too, too crazy on the chipping, but we will do a little rust and then a lot of grime and grease and stuff built up on it. First step uh, I'm going to do is we're going to put some grime all over all of the, the different uh, cracks and crevices inside here. What I like to do first is put a little bit of thinner down first on the surface and that way when the the grime hits it it has a tendency to flow a little bit easier so it doesn't just clump down in one little area and then just using our fine brush start touching it to all the different little bolt heads and along seams just so it doesn't look so clean and shiny and it makes all these other little parts pop out. And then like in the crevices back here, you'd expect a little bit extra to start forming mud and grime, things like that. I'm trying to hold the brush in such a way that I don't end up covering up the camera view. And then after you can take your same soft brush again, and kind of pull out some of it. A paper towel for the excess. And then that way you can adjust the amount of dirt and grime you want in certain areas. This way once we get done all this white won't be so white. So I'm going to go over the whole vehicle now with just the uh, the grime first and then we'll come back and we'll do the next step. I also want to add a little bit of a rust effect to some of these larger scratches. So once again we'll put a little thinner down get it nice and wet and then just using some of our light rust wash just put a little bead around on there and then taking our flat brush again kind of just pull it down trying to leave just a little bit along the line and a little bit of it should even start to pool on the bottom.
and hopefully you can see in that area how it just leaves a little bit of rust. We're not going to try to go too crazy with it, but enough that it looks like the vehicle, because it's a snow camouflage, I figure it snows a lot, it's raining a lot, there's sleet, all kinds of things like that, so the vehicle would rust a little bit. Now this isn't fully dry yet, but hopefully you can see the effect I was trying for well on the camera that we have just the light amount of scratching, but with the rust that's starting to go through. Because like I said, this is supposed to be a wet environment if there's snow around, and that a vehicle that would be out in the, out in the uh, terrain for a while would get a little bit beat up and rusted. And keeping with our, uh, our weathering of just wanting kind of a cold, wet look, we're going to use some Vallejo Thick Mud and not going to go crazy but we want to try to keep a lot of the the mud up inside on the side of the tank. You can get a little bit up on the, on the uh, bottom of the track but I don't want to go too crazy with it because a lot of that would have come off in a real wet snow type situation. And now I'm putting it on kind of thick right here but I'm going to gradually blend it and blend it and blend it until we get a nice real th small smooth area. I'll clean it off any of the uh, the tops of those teeth if we don't like the way it looks in there but it's kinda hard with the camera in the way too to get up inside there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up all of this and put a layer of the mud up inside there and then come back and show you what we're gonna do next. Okay well here's our uh, final reveal that I wanna show you. Um, a few other things that I've done on the vehicle I went over the inside of all the mud that we did inside there. See if I can brighten this up a little bit for you. I uh, went and put some different color washes inside of there. I also went ahead and put a rust wash on all the end connectors and then the center connectors on all the track. So when you look at the track, you should see like a little amount of rust, which looking at the real vehicles, quite a bit of them did have that on there, even ones that weren't that old. So kind of give you a spin around here. Uh, another thing I'll point out to you too, the the lens was not part of this kit right here and I was going to put it on and I was out of some of the clear plastic that I normally would put on it. So I ordered some up but I didn't want to delay the uh, putting this video out for the sake of that. So I will eventually go and paint that in and then put the lens on top of it as well. Okay, I also wanted to give you a secondary view of the vehicle. I put on a... Uh, thing of tarps and bags and boxes in the back here. This is actually not attached. Like what had happened on this right here is this thing is supposed to be removed on the, from the vehicle and because on the normal tank, on the normal in 60, this would be the uh, the barrel holder and they wanted you to scrape that off and I just thought that's going to be way too much of a problem scraping that off without messing anything up. So I uh, plan on putting stowage on the back of it anyway. So I'll paint this up a little bit more and we'll glue that on. Also want to show you that uh, we went ahead and when I was initially putting the tarps on, I kind of pushed them into the shape of the uh, of the cage underneath there. And you can kind of see it popping through. So uh, I used our same grime wash just really lightly and kind of put just a little bit on, kind of blended it in there. So the tarps themselves are a little bit dirty as well. Zoom in here a little bit more. You can see some of that rust now that it's completely dried up. So that is the uh, the completion of the vehicle, and I hope you guys liked it. Uh, like I said, I was just having so much fun doing the uh, the weathering. I but I think it looks kind of cool to do something a little bit different outside of the comfort zone. So in a nutshell, uh, the kit is a uh, a fairly straightforward, easy to put together kit. Like I said, I did have a little problem with the baskets. Uh, and it wasn't so much the baskets, it was actually some of the photo etch that comes with the kit as well that uh, I just was having that kind of bad day with it. So the tarps had to go on instead. And, and I know some people, I've seen pictures on the internet that people have had no problems getting it. So it was probably quite some of my doing on that too. But I think the tarps look good on it. I want to take this opportunity to give a special thanks to all my subscribers and viewers. And 
really appreciate all of the people that take the time to leave positive comments on the channel. This is a great, great hobby, and because of you guys, you've inspired me. I've produced more models in the last year than probably the, the previous 10 years combined, and I'm absolutely having a blast right now. Modeling is a great, great hobby, and I'm thrilled that I see so many of you comment that you haven't picked up a model in 10, 20 years, and you've watched some of the videos, and you're all inspired to start building again. And that's the main thing, is to go out and have some fun with this hobby, because it, it is great. So I want to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.